Corn farmers have big ears. Hey, a lot of you guys have been asking us to visit the farm again and see what Tom and Randall are doing. Well, we're here today. Actually, it's our second day here. We didn't get much video yesterday. We were uh, busy, busy, busy. We're starting today, like most harvest days at the farm, trying to unload what we finished last night. Let's get started. I guess it is a good idea to shut the vent doors before you fill it. Got the old 46 play on this auger. Tom bought that a couple of years ago. It wouldn't run very good. You got her running. It's been a perfect auger tractor for him. So you got two vents here behind us that are the same size, the, the older two, right? Right. We filled that that one up there, the, the, the one on the north end, we filled it yesterday. Yeah. Pretty good day, good pretty day good day. For us. We're close. That's a good day. <laughs> we, we, we sell about 17,000 bushels of corn yesterday. Most of the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Most of it after lunch. Most of it after lunch, and uh, that'd be about 17 semi truck loads. Yeah. So, pretty successful for, for, this, uh, for this organization. That's pretty good for us. Not all of the areas that my family farms are flat and easy to access. Here's an example. Had a, an 11 acre field on that side of this uh, big ditch or creek or whatever you might call it. Got her finished. You can see where the tractors come out with uh, the grain so far. And here comes the combine, he's done. I promise you, Randall's not incredibly comfortable there. They're not really sure he'll be able to make it out after we've hauled these uh, loads of corn out. It's so front heavy. It's lifted as high as it'll go. is deceiving in this particular shot it's much steeper than it looks it's kind of common in this area this is a steep little hill right beside the creek and so we would call that a bluff the road was built sideways up the steepest part and now we're going directly up the less steep part I need to apologize about the audio quality in this episode quite frankly it was a little bit of laziness on my part You'll see a lot of different people involved as we go throughout this episode, and I just didn't take the time to uh, put a mic on every individual, and since I wasn't doing that, I didn't even wear one myself. I guess I've kind of got spoiled with the audio that we usually have, and I thought the built-in camera audio would be better on these GoPros and the later revisions, and, well, it's still not very good, is it? 
We'll talk with Randall in a minute about the weeds in these ditches, so hang tight on that. Meanwhile, I'm going to be quiet here for a minute or so. We've got some really good drone shots, and I'll just let you enjoy the machine noise. Well, this field's got some pretty steep hills, Randall. Yeah, it does. Just adds a little challenge. What kind of challenge do you see when you get the big hills? Keeping it on the road, mainly. <laughs> Combine wants to kind of slide down the hill, or what are you, what are you seeing? <laughs> yeah, sometimes the ditch at the bottom may need some attention, but it brings your, to your attention whenever you uh, fall off in it sometimes. Yeah, it seems like if you don't hit it just perfectly square, which you can because you, you've got to go with the row here, that sometimes when you hit it, 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 it makes the combine swing a little bit. Now we're seeing a lot of weeds in these ditches. Why, why is that? Yeah, it sprays around them. It doesn't kill the weeds in the ditch. Okay. Why is that? Because anything growing in them is better than nothing. That helps to prevent erosion. Probably not as good as a official fixed up grass waterway, but at least there'd be something growing in there. So are you getting about done this year? We're gaining. Still got a good bit to go. It's taking longer. The yields are pretty good this year. That's a good problem. It just makes it hard to keep the corn away from the combine. Yeah. That's why we decided to visit. Thought maybe we could help a little bit. I don't know though, it seems like I end up breaking more stuff or getting stuck or whatever than I do actually helping. Water standing in that ditch. Yeah. Come on, header control. been hard to tell on the camera but this header can can, uh, can tilt left to right and you wouldn't think that you would have to do that with the drive wheels right being right behind it but there was a case where it moved probably three or four feet yeah. we wouldn't be able to use this wide of a head without it we got too many uneven places so you have a sensor on each end of the head and then another sensor in the middle right yeah 
run on the ground to tell how far from the ground the, it is. They all work together to keep it at the as close as they can to where you've got it set. Okay. So the objective is to have those uh, snoots or points or whatever as close to the ground as possible without getting them in stuck the and getting them in the ground. Yeah. That happens. And this is all controlled automatically with those three sensors. You got one on each end which controls the tilt, right? Yeah. And then the one in the middle controls the overall height or do they all kind of work well, together? Well, they all that? kind of work together. If one end is, it'll, you know, one sensor can make the whole thing raise up if it gets on something that it needs to come up. It'll twist as far as it can and then if it ain't far enough then it'll raise the whole Okay. Your house. See how the shucks are shredded on it? That's why I want to believe the coons wrote it down. At least the animal damage is such. But if it was if it green snapped and then the coons shredded the stalks, then I don't know. Just green snap comes from big wind when it's really growing fast. So that's why I think it's hard to blame it on that. Yeah, especially when it's small areas that don't necessarily seem to be in a spot where windy right. conditions would, would come along. Does she get some good hillside video? I don't know. She's got uh, thrown out there flying, or did have. I always like, it's interesting to see the far off shots, but I always like when the drone gets really close. Yeah. It gets close ups from angles that you can't get any other way. I have one job, that's to get the truck positioned properly, and I failed. Well, you mess around long enough, Dad will be back, he can do it for you. Yeah, so that's the approach I'll use, just kind of keep putting it off, and then maybe somebody else will do it for me. <laughs> well, I was hoping that Dad would be able to keep up, that way I wouldn't have turned my job over to you. Yeah, you're kind of stuck to that seat. You don't really like yielding that seat, do you? <laughs> Well, I would do some of the truck, and I just uh, a little nervous. I'm, I don't have a lot of experience in the truck, and not only that, I don't have a CDL. I think there's some sort of rules that allow farms to operate without CDL, but I think your truck has to be licensed appropriately, and there's just you know so many subsets to that rule that I'm not sure we qualify. You having fun? Yeah. You like having extra batteries? Oh my, yeah. I don't have to worry about running out before the show's done. He'll have enough corn on that grain car to be able to fill that truck. Maybe even a little bit more. I suspect he'll get it all on that. I believe that's a 24 or 22 inch auger on that particular grain car. And you don't have to run the tractor very fast, RPM-wise, to be able to pump it out there faster than you can control. It's actually pretty hard to keep from overflowing the truck. You've got to be on top of your game. Kind of dirty, but I'll take one for the team and step up there. You can see it's coming out of there pretty quick. One more second and he would have dumped it over the uh, side there, see. Now he's in the back hopper, so it'll take a good while to fill that up. And then he'll have to go fast again. Now he has to have the auger empty to be able to pull it back down. So he had to turn it off to, to close the gate a good while ago.
Yes, you gotta go. Hammer down. You should get off of here. Or else I'll be right. <laughs> Maybe not for long. <laughs> hey, I actually get to do something. No, seriously, I'm not really needed for uh, a lot of the work that they do here, but when they get really busy, then one truck is not enough to, to keep it away. Now they're just hauling to the grain bin, so it's pretty quick to be able to haul there. I'm supposed to drive it up a little bit. It's pretty wet out here, so we'll see if I can accomplish that goal. Probably about it. Tom, this is your Schaefer's grease, right? That's the grease, yes. One of the weak spots, I might say, about this loop shuttle system is that you always had to use the loop shuttle grease. Okay. Right? And the other complaint was that you had, you know, that it was the tubes were more expensive. You know, you have to buy the tubes. Well, I got these guys interested by uh, showing them this manual pump approach here. That works great. So That's you can actually good. buy your grease by the five gallon. And it's cheaper to buy your grease yeah. by the five gallon than it is by the tube, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. And I'll tell you what, we've had really good success with this grease, better than some we've had in the previous past. That it stays where we put it. These uh, tubes are supposed to last five or six times. Okay. Right. And that's what they said. It'll be interesting to see your experience. Right. I mean, yeah. how, how yeah, they how really long last. They last. I'm not sure. It's not messy, is it? No. no. Now I suppose there'll be a little bit of mess when we take that follower out of the, well, out yeah, of the bucket. Yeah, but that's, you know, kid always likes playing the grease. <laughs> Wonder how many tubes we can get out of a five gallon bucket. The world will never know. <laughs> well, I think it's working pretty slick. Yeah, so see there's no there's no plunger in the in the tube, so yeah, you, it's not gonna it leak down, not gonna leak out of the bottom. Ten tubes. They're easy to buy. Are they? Yeah, if, if you do need to buy some refill tubes, you can get them at lube-shuttle.us okay. slash okay. store. Okay. Link in the description there, Tom. Yeah, Montana did three tubes over last year today. I mean, how much grease do you use, Terry? A couple of tubes a day, probably. Well, yeah, depends yeah. on what we're greasing. Well, we're in a different field now. This one's flat. We're in the river bottoms of Lane County, Illinois. This is the same place that I did my one of my last projects with my dad, uh, where we cleared up a little wood, piled it up on the brush pile, and lit it. It was on the other end of this particular field. This field's right along the river levee, Little Wabash River. They rebuilt the levee. Yeah, I shouldn't say rebuilt it. They just kind of changed the backside of it here to provide this little shelf maybe four or five, three or four years ago. The sun is beautiful this evening. Well, what's left of the sun for the day? What you doing, Tom? Oh, what can you say? Turn around in the corn and you mash it down. Yeah, I saw you. you had your truck out here and mashed all this down. Yeah, what can we say? Hard to get good health, you know? Yeah. Whose land is this that you're not taking care of very good? Well, I've heard of the guy and had to deal with him a few times, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes he's hard to get along with. Some days he's easier than other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Tom owns this land. <laughs> this is uh, this is the pile of corn you've, you've gathered up. Yeah. I think this is just a feel good thing. Yeah, you've got what? 30 cents worth there Something now? more or less, yeah. What's it take, 100 ears to make a bushel? I think so. That's what they always said. I think Probably so. the ears were bigger in those days. Probably were. So it might even take more than that. You're after consistent half pound or three quarter pound ears now, what you're after yeah. to make yields. Back in the day, they wanted them bigger. Biggest ears were the best. Corn farmers have big ears. <laughs> well, Christy, I guess we could be farmers. Yeah, it's a lot more expensive equipment. And it's sick to walk here. Yeah. Yeah, this is a lot of fun to come visit. Yeah, it is. Well, this one's pretty old, though. This is, I think, a 2009 model. Okay, wow. It's a really good one. It's been an incredible combine for them. It's time for it to find a new home, probably. but. It's it's really been an incredible machine. One thing I'm thankful for is that a 
growing up in farming families is a, a good way to grow up. It really is, yeah. Yeah, it's a special lifestyle. There's, there's no question. Not a lot of people get that opportunity. Right. It's a lot of work, but you learn responsibility and hard work and management yep. skills. You learn a lot of reality. You know, yeah. one thing that I've noticed this uh, week is, you know, things break. And everybody seems to be calm and we fix them and go on. Sometimes you have a really good, a really good day. We've had yeah. a couple of really good days here. Getting a lot of corn out in the field. The weather's been perfect. It really has. It's going to rain tomorrow, so I'm trying to get as much out as possible. But I think it's neat that how everybody has to work together. You can't do this one person. It would take a long time yeah. for one person to do it. Uh, and sometimes it really does take multiple people just to, to do some of the, the heavy lifting, or not really lifting, but pulling and grinding and all when you're fixing. Yeah. Somebody needs to hold one end while the other guy pulls over here and whatever. There's a lot of that that goes on. A lot of what we show in the video and, and other channels show in the video is, is out operating the equipment. But there's, there's so much more to there's it. There's so much more, yeah. And, uh, for instance, you know, we're, we're in the combine shell of the corn, but there's three other pieces of equipment running right now. There's the grain cart, which you, you know you just saw us unload on it. Semi trucks hauling away from us, um, and then they have to go to grain bins. So they have to they have to move the uh, upright auger from the grain bins so that they can go to different bins because we're able to fill a bin in a day uh, easy. In, in this case, we filled one almost before lunch. Oh wow! From start to finish, it was a smaller one. But, uh, so there's a, a lot of work that has to be done. That, doesn't get shown a lot of times. And then there's the behind the scenes. Like I made lunch today and brought it all to the field. We had a picnic in the field. Yeah. yeah we should have shot some of that. It. It's good stuff. It's enjoyable times. We usually stop for lunch in this family, even though that that's uh it takes some time. It takes time and it's some of the best harvest time is right there during lunch. But the family has always chosen to stop for lunch. It probably costs thousand or fifteen hundred bushel of harvest every day. Oh wow. Okay, tomorrow I'll just throw it in then. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, This is auto steer. Can't you just eat while it's going? Actually, when we're shelling corn, we don't use auto steer. Oh. I'm going to have to steer this. Because staying on the road. Now, there is some technology that makes that possible. But we don't have it here. I'm not sure. Uh, of the details of that Randall help tell us about that. Now we should see bunnies come out here at the end, there's no question. We always, uh, on the last strip, there will be bunnies right out in front of us. There, oh, there you go. Right. There you go. Here's another one. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, will never cease. Ten. Ten. I didn't get it out. I was like, tractor my way. Couldn't remember my own name or something. You want to do it again? No. It's always a one and one, one and done. done. Yeah. Whatever happens, happens. Usually it's not you who can't get it out, though. <laughs>